Hey guys, Vladimir here. I was browsing Apple Oxi for some Christmas uh, design ideas and I came across this uh, Snowflake project page and they really got some really neat Snowflake designs here and I especially like this sort of geometric shape one. And I thought, well, you know, this would be a great uh, design to tackle in Fusion and it would make for an excellent uh, little design challenge. Now, obviously this is made for laser cutting, but no reason why you can't 3D print this as well. So I went ahead and uh, designed this uh, snowflake and here it is. And I'm gonna show you my approach to designing it, but I thought, why don't we turn this into, um, you know, a little uh, design challenge. So uh, why don't you go ahead and tackle it, uh, pause the video, give it a shot, and then come back and compare your approach with mine. Now, there isn't one correct way to design anything, but there are more efficient ways than others. And in this video, you're gonna see it's gonna be jam-packed with constraints. You know how I'm always talking about constraints and how you want to be very comfortable with them and incorporating them into your design because it'll make your workflow way more efficient and just flow so much better. And that's why I have my free constraints cheat sheet, which is a downloadable PDF that describes each of these constraints and what they do. So click the link below to get that and print it out or save it to your desktop and reference it as you need it. All right, if you're up for a challenge, pause this video, go ahead and tackle this design and then click play and uh, we'll compare results. All right, I'll begin by creating a sketch on the XY plane R for rectangle and then I'm gonna click on the center rectangle tool here in my sketch palette. We'll do a 20 by 20 millimeter rectangle and we're gonna create a couple more of those. So I'll just right click, repeat center rectangle, again, 20 by 20. Now with this one, I'm gonna take the center and rotate it. And I'll do that by double clicking on the center here, taking the little rotation widget here, I'll type 45 degrees. And now I have this rotated rectangle, but you can see it is not constrained at all, so I can uh, move it around, I could even rotate it. So what we'll do first is I'll go ahead and constrain it vertically by grabbing my uh, vertical constraint here, clicking on, here yeah, I'll do, you know, I'll do the center and then the origin. And that'll lock it there, but I can still rotate it and I can still move it up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this, um, whoops, let me, you can see how it acts a little crazy there. Uh, let's grab our vertical constraint there and we'll, um, constrain this uh, center construction line there and that's going to lock it in place so it doesn't rotate anymore. And then our final constraint there will be a dimension from the origin to the center here. Whoops, let's do that one more time. Make sure we click on that origin, click on the center and I'm going to make that 36 millimeters. All right, we're going to go with another center rectangle. So R for rectangle, choose my center rectangle there. And I go ahead and pretty much rinse and repeat here. So 20 millimeters on both sides there and click the center, turn the widget there, 45 degrees. And let's go ahead and constrain this vertical line. And then what I'm gonna do is grab my coincident constraint and coincident the center point with this top corner there. And then just a sort of a V shape coming from the top here. Uh, many ways I could do that. I'm gonna approach it by just drawing it out over here. Notice I get that uh, perpendicular constraint right there. And so if you don't get it, you can always just add that in. It's the exact same constraint as this guy right there. So let's add it. And I wanna take these two lines and make them equal together. So I'll grab my equal constraint and select both of them. Now you can see they grow and shrink together. And I want this to be so that this uh, angle here, or if I draw a vertical line, that it'll be 45 degrees on each side. Um, so a uh, way I'm gonna approach that is I'll just draw a line across these and then make that line a construction line. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make that line horizontal. So now that this will be perfectly horizontal. I'm gonna move this over here. And what I'm gonna do is uh, constrain this point to my origin. So I'll grab my vertical constraint and grab both of those points there. And now it gets lined up. And then finally, I'll just add a dimension from the center here. I'm gonna make this, I believe I went with 56 millimeters. Perfect. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is actually put a, uh, let me undo that, put a dimension on this line here. Now remember I made that equal to this line here as well. So once I change this dimension, both should update. All right, and then finally I'll just draw a line attaching the midpoint of this rectangle to the point right there. 
and there we go. That takes care of sort of that first arm there, and now I'm gonna draw just another branch coming this way. I'll start that off by drawing a line from this corner. You'll notice I get that parallel constraint that goes right in. Fusion decides that it probably makes sense that that's what I'm looking for, so it, it will add that in. Another way I could handle that is, let's say I, I purposely um, say don't make it parallel, is I can grab my collinear constraint. It'll actually do the exact same thing if I say I want this to be collinear with this line here. So whether they're collinear or parallel, in this case it's the same thing. All right, so now I'm going to grab another center rectangle here and again, 20 by 20. I wanna make this point here uh, coincident to this point here. So I'll grab my coincident constraint and uh, click on both of those and it'll add them right in. Forgot to add a dimension on this line here. I want that to be 20 millimeters. All right, just a couple more lines to add here. I'll take a line from my midpoint here to the midpoint of that line. And again, from that midpoint to this one. And there we have it. So that's everything I need for this snowflake finish sketch E4 extrude. I'm gonna go with my thin extrude and then I'm just gonna click on these lines here. I'm gonna avoid that center rectangle and I'm gonna grab every other line that's here. This one as well, you should have seven selected. Uh, I'm gonna go with a wall thickness of three millimeters, distance of three. Wall location, I'm gonna change that from side one. You can see how it's kind of arranged here. Uh, so I'm gonna go with center and that will place my extrusion right on the center of my lines and click OK. And then next I'm gonna take these bodies and I'm going to do a circular pattern. So we'll go pattern, circular pattern, choose both of these bodies. My axis here is going to be my Z axis right there. I'm gonna want four of those. And there we have it, click OK. And finally I can bring in that center rectangle E4 extrude here, grab my thin extrude, Give it the same thickness, uh, three millimeters, distance of three, and side. I'm gonna change that, or wall location, I'll change that to center. My operation is going to be join, and click OK, and there is my snowflake. How did you do? And I'm just realizing I forgot one little branch that's supposed to go right here. So good thing Fusion 360 is parametric, meaning you don't have to worry about breaking your design when you need to go back and make a change. And they actually make it super easy to do so. So the way I can approach this is I can simply go to my timeline here, double click to open up that first sketch. You can also right click and then click edit sketch. And here you can see um, in my sketch, I'm gonna draw two lines. So L for a line, I'm just gonna grab a line going vertically and then grab a line going horizontally here. And I don't have to worry about making the dimensions for each one because I'm gonna simply grab my equal constraint here and click on both of these lines. It'll make them equal. Now I just put the dimension on one of them. So 15 millimeters. And there you go, they're both 15. And I also want this line to be in the middle of this line here, um, this point to be in the middle. So what I can do is grab my midpoint constraint, which is this little triangle here. So this allows me to show you one more constraint. I'm gonna click on my uh, point there between uh, where those two lines come together and then I'll click on this line here and it's gonna throw it right in the middle and you see that little triangle constraint there. All right, finish my sketch. And we don't see anything yet, that's because we have to include it in this extrusion here. So in my timeline, I'm gonna double click that second extrude, bring my sketch into view, and I'm simply gonna select the line there, and you can see it threw it in, and now if I simply click OK, it will go ahead and apply that to the next uh, step there, which is that circular pattern, and you can see that all of these arms have it. So super easy way to make changes. Gotta love that capability of Fusion 360. Okay, now I'm finished for real. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or thoughts on my approach, I'll leave it in the comments below. If you enjoy my content and want to support me creating more of these, then uh, consider becoming a Patreon. I have a link below. I've also got some excellent Fusion 360 courses. Links are below as well. Oh, and don't forget that constraints cheat sheet. All right, guys, I'll see you in a few.